it really is an honor to be recognized uh, by one's colleagues and peers. And for a lithographer, I think that that is what the Fritz Zernike Award represents. Uh, since there are many quite accomplished uh, lithographers, this is uh, particularly gratifying. Uh, the description on the SPI website that details the reasons why I was given the Zernike Award mentions uh, several specific contributions from early in my career, such as the uh, image log slope um, and uh, problems addressed uh, having to do with uh, mask uh, defect printability and, and some problems in thin film optics. When, when I started in the semiconductor industry, it, was, it really was an interesting time, uh, particularly for lithographers. Uh, prior generations of lithographers had addressed some very important practical issues. Uh, for example, uh, vacuum vapor prime had been uh, developed and uh, this improved the adhesion of resistive substrates that, that proved uh, very valuable as we uh, it made um, smaller and smaller features and it was hard, uh, increasingly difficult to get them to stay on the wafers. Um, there are other problems such as resist edge bead that got addressed. But if you look at the uh, uh, proceedings from conferences uh, in lithography from the 1970s uh, and early 1980s, you know, frankly, you wouldn't see a lot of equations. But, but that was changing at the time I entered the semiconductor industry. For example, the uh, pioneering lithography simulation program sample had just been uh, introduced and, and made available and, and it was there uh, for me to use. And um, that was really uh, pretty important uh, because I, I could do lithography simulations very uh, early on and didn't have to spend months and months uh, uh, programming and debugging a, a, a lithography simulator of my own. And, and I used it uh, right away. Uh, the metric, the image log slope was, was basically a concept, but uh, it, its value couldn't really be appreciated until it was tested with some very specific examples. Uh, and for that one needed lithography uh, simulation. And simulation and, and, and computational lithography has continued to be very, very important uh, over the years. Uh, it went from the basic uh, simulations uh, of those early days to things like uh, resolution enhancement techniques and um, optical proximity corrections. And, and now we see very sophisticated implementations such as uh, inverse uh, uh, lithography technology. Uh, you know, something else that was very important uh, in my career, uh, again, fairly early on, I, I was actually uh, made manager of a lithography department. And it's been my good fortune to uh, have uh, a number of really, really excellent uh, engineers in my group. Uh, several of them are uh, SPIE fellows, and actually two of them were prior uh, recipients of the uh, Fritz Zernike Award. Um, when, uh, you know, after I, I first came up with the uh, image log slope, well, we used it quite a bit at, at AMD where I worked at the time, but uh, we didn't publish it because the utility of the metric was, was appreciated and, well, we didn't want to share it with the competition. Um, but at one point, uh, my colleague Bill Arnold and I uh, noticed that uh, quite a bit of money was getting spent on uh, X-ray lithography. And, and we really didn't think this was a uh, good uh, use, a wise use of resources. And so we um, decided that uh, the best thing uh, to do was to uh, write a paper arguing that uh, optical lithography could be extended uh, you know, quite um, a distance further. And uh, in order to make a, a good solid argument, we wanted to use the image log slope. So we got uh, uh, approval from our executives to, to, to publish uh, the, the metric along with the paper. Uh, in that paper, we um, uh, made something that at the time was considered very, very aggressive. We, we said uh, that optical lithography would go all the way, at least to half a micron in, in size. Um, and at the time, that, that was considered uh, you know, pretty outrageous. But um, of course, uh, we uh, did half micron and, and uh, quite a bit beyond with uh, optical lithography as we went through uh, shorter and shorter wavelengths and uh, larger and larger uh, numerical apertures. 
And in each wavelength and, and new generation of technology, there are all sorts of uh, interesting uh, problems uh, to be solved. Of course, um, you know, eventually we did uh, run out of steam with uh, optical lithography. And, um, you know, today we're in the uh, era of uh, EUV lithography, which after uh, you know, decades of work, uh, finally uh, made its way into uh, high volume manufacturing uh, well, two, three years ago. And uh, it's what's uh, used predominantly for leading edge uh, technology today. As with all prior uh, generations of lithographic technology, we, we want to extend it. And uh, there are all sorts of fascinating problems to, to, to be addressed by uh, lithographers today. Uh, we have the issue of stochastics, uh, important for uh, yield, as well as uh, parameters uh, that are affected by uh, line edge roughness. Uh, people have worked, again, decades to reduce uh, defects on EUV masks, and more work uh, continues uh, to be done there. We have the problem of mask 3D effects that becomes increasingly important as we uh, go to smaller and, and smaller features. Cost has always been a, a, a concern uh, for lithography, and, and uh, most definitely so for uh, EUV lithography. I saw an estimate down on the uh, internet the other day saying that a single high NAEV tool cost uh, well, it was expected to cost uh, $340 million. Uh, pretty incredible. Um, there are also, I think, a number of uh, interesting uh, problems to be addressed uh, for lithography at larger feature sizes. For example, in the area of silicon photonics, the, the feature sizes are hundreds of nanometers in size but they often involve very complex uh, curvilinear features and need exceedingly low uh, line edge roughness. So I think that you know, even though the features are large, there's some interesting problems for lithographers uh, to solve. Uh, packaging is also uh, an area that's growing and uh, there are uh, lithography issues to be addressed there, even though the resolution um, uh, is only now uh, getting to be a submicron. But I think it's very important because it addresses problems in uh, system performance and addresses some of the cost issues uh, uh, that we have, especially with uh, EUV. It's also a good time for the, our industry in that we are growing. Um, you know, the business is doing quite well. And I think that's really important because by having a nice revenue stream, um, we have the resources to fund the R&D uh, to create new generations of technology and then to build the manufacturing facilities that we need uh, for uh, new generations of technology. So overall, I think this, uh, you know, lithography uh, has always been excited, uh, exciting, uh, continues to be so, um, and I think will be for, uh, you know, quite uh, some time.